Alain Delon, Marcelo Mestriani, and Marlon Brando fought for her heart, but she never had affairs on set, and in general did not seek to get married. However, she still found her happiness, and the Chosen One gave her everything she dreamed of, love and freedom. Her real name is Claude Josephine Rose Cardinal. She was born in Tunisia into an Italian family. She spoke French, the official language of the colony, best of all. The French accent remained with her until the end. In her first Italian films, she was voiced by other actresses, but this did not stop Fellini and Visconti from idolizing her. In her youth, the future star was an ugly duckling, but in 1957, she won a beauty contest, receiving the title of the most beautiful Italian woman in Tunisia. A year earlier, she starred in a short film by Reen Vauthier, which won a prize at the Berlin Film Festival. And after winning the competition, she went to conquer Venice. A trip to the festival was a prize. The girl was noticed by producer Franco Cristaldi, surrounded her with attention, and persuaded to sign a contract with Vides. She later regretted more than once the contract signed with very strict conditions, and that she got in touch with Franco, who literally set up surveillance on her, but the fact remains that it was thanks to him that Claude Josephine became a star. In 1958, she starred in Mario Manicelli's film The Intruders, as always remained unknown as a Sicilian girl. And already in 1960, Handsome Antonia was released, where he and Mastroianni played the main roles, and the legendary film Rocco and His Brothers. Claudia hurried to leave her native country, not only because she dreamed of fame and a career in cinema, she wanted to hide from terrible memories. The fact is that the very year 1957, when she won a beauty contest, presented her with another unexpected gift. A son. Unfortunately, it was not a long-awaited baby from a loved one. Claudia was a victim of violence. At that time, the girl liked a young man. She was kind of in love with him, but she couldn't get to know him in any way. A French friend invited her to a party, promising that there would be the object of her longings. They arrived at the place, went into an empty house, and when the girl began to realize that something was wrong here, the door was already locked. The Frenchman turned out to be not a gentleman at all, rather the opposite, and after a while she found out that she was pregnant. Of course, a child would have put an end to her career, so at the insistence of the producer, the same Franco Cristaldi, she quietly gave birth and introduced the baby to everyone as a brother. Franco also made an agreement with the actress' parents. Patrick himself did not know that he was Claudia's son until he was seven years old. The relationship with producer Franco would now be called toxic. From the outside, it might seem that he adored her, but in fact, it was constant monitoring and surveillance. Not only was Claudia bound by a bonded contract, according to which the studio could not refuse and was obliged to star in all the proposed films, up to five or six films a year. She also had practically no money. Most of the income went to Franco's account. When she finally met another man, she left with almost nothing. He and Franco were kind of a couple, but they never lived together. He controlled her every step. His press secretary, or one of her assistants, was present at all her filming, even on site. She was constantly under supervision. His manic jealousy knew no bounds. Franco even insisted that they get married, but the marriage was concluded in the USA, so the actress herself calls it a sham. In Europe, she remained free. She was saying, I've never really felt like his life partner. We were not on equal terms. I remained a Cinderella, favored by him. For the help I received, I had to turn into a thing, lose my own will and the ability to make independent decisions. However, when an English reporter revealed the secret of Claudia's son's birth, and she had to confess everything to journalists, Franco adopted the boy and gave him his last name. Patrick Cristaldi subsequently left for the USA because he felt uncomfortable in Italy. In her interviews in recent years, Claudia recalls all the handsome men with whom she worked on the set. Elaine Delon was overly narcissistic, Mastroianni was too chic, and Marlon Brando was simply not refused, perhaps she was the first and last. But no, she didn't have a single bright working romance with her film partners. On the one hand, she was not very interested in a one-time relationship. She did not want to become another trophy. On the other hand, the negative experience made itself felt. 
Well, Franco's surveillance probably got in the way too, you shouldn't discount the jealous producer. But at the age of 37, Claudia met her true love, as they say in the novels. Director Pasquale Squitieri offered the actress a role in his film, and they very quickly realized that there was more between them than just a working relationship. He was not afraid of an influential producer, and she finally felt herself with him, free. Cristaldi was not going to give up so easily. Blackmail and threats were used, he even tried to commit suicide. But the actress did not take it seriously, she had already made a decision and was not going to change it. Then the producer threatened that he would do everything to ruin her career and her new lover. But it was all in vain. Do you think that's where the actress changed her mind and walked down the aisle? No, at 41, she gave birth to a child from a man she loved, this time a daughter. And when the girl turned 10, they moved to Paris with her, leaving Pasquale in Italy. She is constantly asked how it happened that she and her loved one lived in different countries, but she replies that they do not need to see each other every day. It turned out that in order to save a marriage, it is not necessary to see each other every day. It is enough to call back ten times a day. I guess Pasquale and I just both like to be alone, but we still need each other. Judging by the fact that I have never been officially married in my life, it can be concluded how I feel about marriage. Maybe I signed too many different contracts in my life for filming movies, and I absolutely did not want to sign at least one more one concerning my relationship with a man. I've always wanted maximum freedom, and I'm enjoying it as a result. They eventually broke up with Pasquale, but remained on friendly terms forever. He passed away in February 2017. According to the latest data, Claudia lives mostly in France, but feels like an Italian.